I wasn't too difficult. But one problem with using Pascal's triangle is if you want to do a uh, power 10, you have to make 10 rows. Yeah. And what we'd really like to do is to be able to jump straight to row 10 without needing to do rows 1 to 9. Okay? And so just before we start, a little bit of a definition. Um, this symbol here is called factorial. Some people have seen this before. So if I do 4 factorial, it means I want to calculate this. Uh, this is 24, isn't it? Uh, 3 factorial is this. 2 factorial is 2. 1 factorial is 1. one. And 0 factorial is 1. Strangely. Um, so these factorials, we need them for the next piece. So these are called factorials. Uh, so again, you can see the word factor inside of factorial because that's what these are, factors being multiplied together. I think there is an explanation for zero factorial. There is. Do you want to try it? No, I'll forget it. <laughs> I'll give you the explanation if you'd like to know. So if you have um, three books on a shelf, how many ways can you rearrange the book? So you can have it ABC, ACB, BAC, BCA, CAB, and CBA. So that's six, isn't it? Or in other words, three factorial. If you have two books on the shelf, how many ways can you arrange them? Two ways. You can have AB or BA. That's two factorial. If you have one book on the shelf, there's one way you can arrange it. And if you have no books on the shelf, there's one way to arrange that, which is an empty shelf. Yeah? So this is one of the reasons why this is equal to 1. Okay? Um, right. Do we have this? Can I go down? Yep. Okay. Uh, so we have this function called N C or Chinese students, you would have learnt it like this, yeah. or CM. Um, please use this one. Because this is what will be used in the exam. So here we always have a bigger number on the top and a smaller number on the bottom. The meaning of MCR is this. It's N factorial over or factorial multiplied by n minus or factorial. So for example, 10 C3 would equal 10 factorial, 3 factorial, and then what would be here? That would be 7 factorial, for example. So let's calculate a smaller one as an example. Uh, 3 C2, that would be 3 factorial over 2 factorial, 1 factorial, which would be 6 over 2, which would be 3. Now, this function is on your calculator. Can everybody just take a minute to find where it is on the calculator? Sometimes it's on the multiply, sometimes it's on the divide button, but it should be on your calculator. For you, it's on the divide button, yeah? yeah? Did you find where it is? Yeah? You have to do a shift. Yes, yes. <coughs> Did everybody find it? You didn't find it, Tony? No, I it. Yes? So, um, I want you to type in on the calculator, just type this in to make sure you get 3 as the answer. Six. C2. Just practice typing it in. Yep.
Okay, did you get that? Yeah. Does anyone need help with the calculator? No, everybody got it? Yeah? Okay. So with your calculator, um, calculate this please. What is it? 0 C0 zero is 1. Okay. Now, now calculate the, uh, oops, sorry. Calculate these two. One. 1 and 1. Okay. Now calculate these three. And lastly, calculate these four. One, three, two, three. Yeah, yeah, you get the idea now. So you see what's happening? We can use this function to make any row we want on the, triang uh, on the triangle. So what we do is, um, if we want row number 10, we put the row on the top, and then here goes from zero to row. So for example, if I want row 10, row 10, I need to calculate 10C0, 10C1, 10C2, etc. until I get to 10C10. And this will make row number 10. So this will be a, a very useful way uh, to expand. We don't even need to use the triangle anymore. I'll do some examples. But just so you know... What's wrong? Can we write it like this uh, with the brackets? Yes, actually, that's true too. Um, I think in the exam they only use the C, but a lot of people also write it with uh, brackets like this. If you want to, that's fine. Yeah. Question? Question? No? Question? Are you sure? Now's the time to ask. To calculate? Yeah. Calculate which now? Like the this thing? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. What way do you calculate it? Like, for example, if I said 4C1. Yeah, you use the same formula. Yeah. Like, like the formula. Like 4 factorial, 1 factorial, 3 factorial. So we open the form, so the form, like 3 factorial. Oh, yeah, I mean, you can simplify it. So you can also like 3 factorial. Only 4 multiplied by 3 factorial. Yeah. Yeah, and then you can cancel here. Yeah. Oh yeah, but we all have calculators, so we'll all be lazy. <laughs> that's, that's what I'm saying. <coughs> it is quicker, it is quicker, but you will never ever do this actually in the exam because you are able to use this on your calculator. Yeah. So for the exam, I don't expect you to actually write this down. I would just expect you to write that down and you can use your calculator. Uh, now, in some situations, maybe you have to write this down, but I've never seen that in the exam. And if you want to cancel and simplify, you know, I think you were saying open the 4 as 4 times 3 factorial and cancel, that's good too. Yeah. Um, are you allowed to use calculators back home for your exam? No. Ah, yes. Okay. So, good. Yeah, good, good. Um, so this is why it's important to know quicker ways to do it. Yeah. All right, so let's have a look at an example of um, using this to expand. So let's say we want to expand something like minus 2x plus y, or let's make it a little easier to start with, uh, x plus y power 4, as an example. Okay, so the first thing you do um, is you have a look at what power you need. So here you need power 4. So we start with 4C0. Then we have our x. And the x can start at 0 or it can start at 4. It doesn't matter. So, we, I don't know, we'll start at 0. 
uh, and then the y must then start at 4. Then you increase, so that's 4c1, the x gets a 1 and the y goes down. Then we have 4c2, the x goes up again, the y goes down, plus 4c3, the x goes up, the y goes down, so now it's at 1. Uh, and then lastly it's 4c4, the x goes up and the y goes down again to 0. So uh, 4c0 is 1, x0 is 1, so this is just y4. Uh, that's a 4. Uh, what's 4c2 now? 6, is it? No. Uh, is it 6? Yeah. 6 x squared y squared plus uh, that will be a 4 on the calculator and then lastly this is a 1 and this is a 1 so you just finish up with that so you can see in about 30 seconds you can expand uh, write this one down and then after you have written it down uh, I want you to try this one for me Yeah. You don't seem so sure. Finish. Will we have a look at it now? So uh, here we should have three C zero two X. Uh, do people care if they start at zero or three here? We prefer zero, okay. Uh, minus three y power three plus three c one two x one minus three y squared plus three c two two x squared minus three y no, hang on, something went wrong here. Oh yeah, one. Sorry. Plus three c three Ah, I write too big. Two uh, x uh, cubed y zero. Uh huh. Minus three y. Can you still see that? Yeah. Just about. Um. Well, I can zoom in, but then the piece at the end gets cut off. Well, this part here we know is one. 
So we can just scoot that off the page. Off you go. Right, there we go. Uh, so this will be tw minus 27y cubed. That's uh, 9 times 2 is 18. Uh, times 3 is 54. Plus 54xy squared. Minus 3 times 4 is minus, twi minus 36. Yeah. yeah. X squared y. And then this is a 1, this is a 1, and that's an 8. 8x cubed. Yeah. Um, in the exam, it's possible that they could say to use the triangle, Pascal's triangle, or this C function. However, uh, of the uh, 16, 16 exams I've seen, 16 out of 16, well, they don't do it in every paper, but basically 100% of past exams, if they do ask you to pick a method, they will tell you to pick the triangle. They've never asked you to do it using this. Now, the syllabus, you know, it said that it could be either, but for some reason, whoever writes the exam, they only ever pick this one. And sometimes they don't say. So if they don't say, you can use I, uh, either one, okay? But um, I think really, this one is the quickest way. And it's the most accurate, because if you're doing the triangle, if you make one mistake, this mistake continues down in the triangle. And it becomes two mistakes, and then three mistakes. So uh, anyways, um, for small powers, this is fine. But for bigger powers, you want to use this one. OK? Um, let's have a look at some uh, examples of when this method is much better than this method. So for example, I would say, What is the, oh yeah, a little bit of vocabulary. So this part here is called the coefficient. The two parts together is called the term. And of course, you know this part already here is the power sometimes called the order, sometimes called the degree. Uh, so please write down these words. Sometimes students mix them up in the exam. So you have coefficient, term, and power. That's an E. So if the question is talking about the coefficient, it's only talking about this part. Sometimes students think it means both. It doesn't. Coefficient just means the number in front of the x. Yeah? Okay. What is the coefficient of x squared in 3x minus 4 power 6. So if you were using Pascal's triangle, you'll have a problem. Not only do you need to go to row 6, you also need to go into the x squared term. Whereas, if you just use the C, you can jump straight to the answer. You know when you expand this, you'll get many terms, dot, 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 plus the term that you care about, plus other terms you don't care about. The term that you want, you know it will have a C in it. 
you know it will have a 3x in it and you know it will have a minus 4 in it. You know what the power should be on this x piece. What should it be? 2. 2, because that's the part that you want is the x squared. You know that this must be 6 because it's power 6. And this can be 2 here. Although it could also be 4. You get the same answer. Well, you know what this must be. What must this be? 4. And here you can write 2 or 4. You can check on your calculator that it's actually the same thing. Is it 2 or 1? Because it's like the first term is uh, 0. Uh, here 2. Which one? The here? The, the first term is 0 and the second one is 1. Yeah. So your question is about the four, is it? No, about two. This two. Six two. No, not that one. Ah, uh, this. Oh, here. Yeah. Ah, now this number here must match one of the numbers up here. So if you go back to my example I did here, notice how it, there's always a match. I can always match this with one of the powers. I must. So here, uh, let's go. I can match it with the 2 or the 4, it doesn't matter. Now I don't need the, well, I don't need the x part. I want the 6c2, 3 squared, minus 4, 4, and then you have your x squared. It's only this part that I care about, the numbers, not the x squared part. Uh, so I take out my calculator and I type all of that in and see what I get. Uh, a huge number. Yeah, 34,560 x squared. Uh, you know why? Why? Yeah. Because I'm confusing. If they ask about, give me the, third, the second term or... Yes, the x squared is not the second term. That's right. It's yeah. the third, third term. Third. Yeah. So this is why you were thinking it, yes. This is actually quite a common question in the exam. Um, so this question kind of forces you to use the C. So it's actually quite common in the exam. Okay, next. Yes. Uh, expand 1 minus x or 1 plus x. No, we'll do minus x. Expand um, that up to the third term in. Ascendant powers of x. So I'll explain these words in a moment, if you can write that down. example I don't want you to expand fully in fact I tell you here to stop uh, after the third term so I don't need the full expansion only up to the third term and ascending here means increasing so I want to see in your answer an x an x squared an x cubed sorry this is ascending powers increasing your other choice was descending which the powers would be decreasing like that. Uh, so ascending is increasing and descending is decreasing. Okay, so I want three terms. So I know the first one will be 10c0. There will be a 1 and a minus x. And then the next one will have a 10c1, a 1 and a minus x. 
and then I must stop after the third term which is this one which has a 1 and a minus x but there are more of course uh, so we must think carefully about the powers um, what power should I put on the 1? 10. 10. 10 because this must be 0 because you want it to increase, increase. Yeah, so then this is a 9 and this is an 8. But of course you realise, well, 1 power 8, what's that? 1, so that's gone. Don't care about that one. Don't care about that one. So you have here um, 1 uh, minus 10x plus whatever 10c2 is. Uh, 45. Um, so this will be plus 45x squared and there are other pieces too ok got that yep. can I scroll down Yes? Okay. Right. I want you to practice the same um, 2 minus 3x in power 4. Let me write this a bit smaller. 2 minus 3x power 4. And 1 minus x power 5. I want you to expand this up to the third term, ascendant again. Uh, no, no, descendant. Uh, so up to the third term, descendant. Now this is a little bit more difficult because you have two answers to multiply. Like also the multiply. Yeah. Third term descendant. Don't forget descendant.
Okay, let's let's have a look at this now. Uh, right. So the first one here, you know, will have a four C zero in it, a two and a minus three X. You know what? I'm gonna run out of space. Next there'll be a four C one, a two and a minus three X. Next there'll be a four C two, a two and a minus three X. And close and open. So there'll be a 5C0, a 1, and a minus X. Then there'll be a 5C1, a 1, and a minus X, plus a 5C2, a 1, and a minus X. Now the powers. Um, what power should I put on the X here? Or what should I put on the 2? Yeah. So it should be 0, 4, one three two two yeah and here it should be zero five one four and here two three so this will be uh, 81 x4 ah, 27 times 2 is 54 216 uh, with a minus 216x cubed and then this will be 9 times 4 is 36 and then what's 4c2 is it 6? Yeah. yeah. Uh, so then times 36 is 216 with a plus. Plus 216x squared. And then here let me see that will be minus. yeah minus 1 so it will be minus x5 plus x4 no, sorry, plus 5. 5x4. Minus 10x3. Minus 10x3. Now the next step is the, or the last step is the multiplying step. But you shouldn't multiply everything here. Because if you did, you would have 9 multiplications. You would have 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3. Uh, you don't need to do as many as 9. When I multiply, what is the biggest power of x I can get? Nine. Nine. So the next one would be eight, and then the next one would be seven. I only need to multiply those terms which will make a seven, an eight, or a nine. Because anything smaller, I don't want to go to. I only want nine, uh, no sorry, what did I say? Seven, wasn't it? No, nine. Seven, eight, nine. No, 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 nine. Nine, eight, seven. The biggest one is 9. Yeah. So I want 9, an 8, and a 7. Okay, so should I multiply the first one with the first one? Yes. Yes. I'll get minus 81x9. Should I multiply the first with the second? Yes, I'll get something. Um, 81 times 5. 405x8. Should I multiply the first with the third? Yes, I'll get minus 810x cubed. Uh, 87x7. X7. Okay. Should I do this one? Oh, sorry. This one? Multiply with this one. Yes, yeah, so I'll make an 8. Should I do this one multiply by this one? Yes, I should. Should I do this one multiply by the last one? No. No. Because that'll only be a 6. So, anyway. Uh, the second one now with the first, I'll get plus 216x8. And then I should do the second with the second, I get uh, 1080 yeah. with a minus 1080x7. But I shouldn't multiply the second with the third because that would make an x6, which I don't want. Now on to the last one. First with uh, third with first. No, yeah. yeah, make a seven. That's it. And then that's it. Because this will be a six and this will be a five. So the last one is minus two one six. X power seven. 
So let's add them together. I have only this for the 9. So that's minus 81x9. And then for the 8, I have this one and this one. So that's 405. So that would be plus 621x8. Yeah. That's right, isn't it? And then lastly, I have this 7, this 7, and this 7. So that's minus, let me see, 810 and 216 and 1080. So 2106x7 and there's more. So this is a difficult question for sure. Example now. Can I scroll down? Yes. Uh, so the last example I'll do here is uh, we want to find P and Q, and I tell you what the first three are. So I want to find what the P and the Q are. Uh, that is a square, yes. Believe, believe it or not, that's a square. Okay, let's have a look at this. So, um, here on the left, if I expand, I know I get 6 C0, PX0, Q6, plus 6C1, PX1, Q5, that's a plus there now, plus 6C2, PX squared, Q4, uh, equals 1 plus 6X plus 15X squared. So on the left I'll have Q6 plus 6PX, sorry, 6PQ5X plus, what's that now, 6C2 is 15, plus 15 P squared Q4 X squared equals 1 plus 6X plus 15X squared. And then what you do is you compare. So on the left you have a Q6 and on the right you have a 1. On the left you have 6PQ5Xs and on the right you have 6X. On the left you have 15P squared Q4 of an X squared. Oh, this is a different colour. This much of an X squared and here it's 15. Yeah, so we can see that Q must be 1 for sure. So because Q6 equals 1, then that must mean for sure that Q must equal 1. But 6PQ5 must equal 15. But we said the Q is 1. So, wait. Uh, no, 6, not 15. <laughs> 6. So then that means um, 6P must equal 6. So then P equals 1. And you can use the last one to check your answer. So 15p squared q4, that's 15 by 1 by 1. What should that equal? Should equal 15, and it does equal 15. So you know that it's right. Now the reason I say you should check is because sometimes there's a plus minus issue. In fact, if you look here, q could have been minus 1. So if Q was minus 1, that still works. That would be, but that would mean that P would have to be minus 1 as well. And this would still work. So really you have two answers here. But in the question, I tell you that P and Q are positive. So because of this, you don't have to worry about the minus. I tell you that they're positive. Because yeah. uh, Cause minus 1 power 6 is actually also 1. 
Oh no, but the but the if you look here, if you have um for example um minus one uh minus x power six, this will also equal one plus six x plus fifteen x squared. So in fact the P or the Q the P and the Q they could have been negative. It'll still be the same. If you expand this you still get the same answer. So there is a plus minus possibility here. Yeah. So just because these are plus doesn't actually mean that the P's and the Q's must be plus as well. Yeah. Um in the exam though, if they gave you a question like this, they wouldn't make P and Q both unknown. Usually it's just one of them. So for example, an exam question might be more like this one. Um, 1 plus px power 6 equals, and then you have your terms. So you realize with just one term it's much easier to do. Uh, because you could probably do it when you get just looking at the second term. Anyway, in the exam it'll be a little bit easier than this. They'll just give you one unknown, not two unknowns. But I don't even think that that was too difficult. Yeah. Okay, let me tell you which ones to try. So, um, one. right, let me think. One G. Are you listening? One G. 2g, 3g, um, 4g, and 5 is optional. In number 5, look at 5a for example. What is different between 5a and 4a? Not the inequality, I'm just saying that P is negative and three unknowns. P, Q and the power and you don't know the power. And this makes it much more difficult to do. So uh, earlier you were talking about the formula with the factorial in it. This is an example where you have to use the factorial formula here. And you know your trick you were saying about the cancelling? That also needs to be used here. But this is way too difficult for the exam. So it's optional if you want to do it. Number 5A? Number 5? Definitely not. Impossible. Um, okay, so you can uh, 1G, 2G, 3G, 4G, and then 5A if you want. So um, just try these for about 5 minutes and then we'll go to the next lesson. Can I close this? Yes?